Hello there. In this video, I'm going to have a problem solving session with a past paper. The paper that I will do today is CIE Economics Paper 2 from May June 23 exam. Let's give it a go. The context is about unemployment in India. I am answering the questions after reading the given text and checking the data. So excuse me for not reading all of them again. Using the data in figure 1.1, calculate the change in India's unemployment rate between July 2020 and May 2021. If I check the data, July, May, then I can say that the I can say that for the given period, India's unemployment rate has increased from 7.4 in July 2020 to 11.9 in May 2021, which is 4.5% increase. Question B, using the information provided, explain how agriculture caused seasonal unemployment in India in December 2020. As we have read from the text, due to the nature of harvesting jobs gone or rarely demanded during the winter season, the agricultural sector has failed to observe the influx of additional labor. Therefore, 9.0 million jobs were gone in agricultural sector, creating more than 6 million additional labor unemployed. Question C, consider the extent to which difficulties may arise in the measurement of unemployment in India. There are a few difficulties that make the unemployment measurement in India challenging, since there are diverse types of hidden unemployment exist. First, for those who have given up actively seeking employment will be out of the labor force. And those who are currently underemployed are simply regarded as employed, even if they're not working at the rightful or fitting job. And those who are doing only part-time jobs also calculated as employed, just like the full-time job workers. So all of them can make the unemployment rate measurement quite inaccurate. In this regard, for the case of India, actual un unemployment can be highly likely to be higher than actual number due to such uh, hidden unemployment above. So I can say that the Indian government must find it difficult to accurately track and calculate the accurate amount of labor force and the employment rates. Question D. Assess whether seasonal unemployment is likely to be a more serious problem than frictional unemployment for India's economy. My intro will include the definitions of seasonal unemployment and frictional unemployment. In the context of India, especially for the agricultural sector that are largely having low income people as workers, um, keeping their livelihood over a year long period without stable job can be quite difficult. Uh, that's why this type of unemployment can worsen the income inequality. And seasonal work can often create vulnerable communities and uh, often require government intervention. On top of that, areas of the country with high seasonal unemployment can uh, be unattractive and local workers also leave to find more stable jobs elsewhere. Um, that's why, uh, in a way, seasonal unemployment can be quite serious. Next, my body too can explain to what extent seasonal unemployment cannot be more serious than frictional unemployment. First, seasonal unemployment doesn't last. Eventually, the peak season of a given industry arrives and many workers become employed once again. Also, frictional unemployment in India is resulting from the reluctance of people relocate to other places or to other sectors. Uh, and it's largely due to geographical immobility or occupational immobility. Uh, I believe these can be more fundamentally harmful to India's economy than seasonal unemployment. And frictional unemployment can cause a loss of productivity as workers are not able to contribute to the economy while they are in between jobs. Also, it can lead to a decrease in the overall level of consumption spending, 
which can be a pretty negative ripple effect on the economy. And unlike seasonal unemployment that will ultimately recover, frictional unemployment can lead to a decrease in the overall economic growth as resources are not being fully utilized. I can conclude that persisting frictional unemployment can be more serious, uh, thus it requires more proactive government measures to alleviate it. Last question E, assess the possible measures that could be taken to increase employment in a country such as India. Intro can include the definitions of government measures to increase employment, such as fiscal, monetary, and supply side policies. And in body one, I can analyze pros and cons of fiscal policy when it comes to increase employment in India, focusing on its feature of being short-term and demand side measure. Uh, specifically, I can explain how and in what ways a fiscal policy works such as increasing uh, public expenditure or decreasing taxes. And I can also put some examples and potential concerns of relying heavily on fiscal policy. Next, in body two, I can present pros and cons of monitor policy this time when it comes to increasing employment. Uh, this one, again, is short-term and demand-side measure. Specifically, monitor policy could be used to increase employment, such as through decreasing interest rates or increasing in money supply. And I can also talk about some potential problems of monitor policy, such as it is too indirect or it doesn't really work well during severe recession, etc. Last, in body three, I can talk about the pros and cons of supply side policy when it comes to increasing employment in countries like India. This measure is rather long-term and focusing more on supporting supply side. This one can be quite fundamentally beneficial by making the country uh, being more productive and innovative. However, the thing is, it also has its own cons, such as it takes too much time and budget, and also um, it can be quite politically motivated or it can create lots of side effects. So that's how I'm going to fill out the content for the essay question. For section B essay question, I'm going to go for question four. Question A, with the help of an ADS diagram, explain cost plus inflation and demand pull inflation in an economy and consider in what circumstances one may be more damaging than the other. Um, as always, my intro will include the definitions of keywords like inflation, stabilizing price level as one of the macroeconomic objectives. And in body one, the analysis will focus on explaining uh, cost push and demand pull inflation, such as I can explain cost push inflation arises from rising the cost of production input. Also, uh, demand pool inflation occurs when demand for goods and services overwhelms supply and additional details and diagram. Next, in body two, I can explain in what circumstances one type of inflation may be more damaging than the other. So first, I can explain that when one country's economy is in the state of decline, such as in recession, according to the business cycle, this case, cost push inflation can be more damaging because it leads to higher prices for consumers, decreased economic output, and increased unemployment, causing economic stagnation or recession. On the other hand, when a country's economy is in upwarding state, uncontrolled demand pool inflation can be more damaging uh, since it can culminate on upward spiral of prices. It can have far-reaching impact on the dynamics of an economy, such, such as it can create the problems of rising prices, erosion of purchasing power, or economic distortions. Question B, assess whether monetary policy or supply-side policy is likely to be more successful in reducing the rate of inflation in an economy. My intro can include the definitions of monetary policy, supply-side policy, and stabilizing inflation as one of the macroeconomic objectives. 
first, in body one, I can argue that monetary policy can be more successful to manage inflation, especially in the short term. I can explain the types of monetary policy in detailed way, uh, how it works to contract the AD. And then I can include the explanation of the pros and cons of monetary policy to reduce the rates of inflation in the economy. And then I can emphasize the fact that they are particularly more effective for demand pool inflation. Next, I can present opposite argument saying that supply side policy can be more successful to manage inflation in a way, especially in the long term. First, I can explain the types of supply side policies to reduce the rate of inflation, such as making the labor market more flexible, uh, increasing public expenditure, or uh, promoting competition in markets. And then uh, I can explain the pros and cons of supply side policy uh, when it comes to reducing the rate of inflation in the economy, such as taking too long time. And I can emphasize the fact that supply side policies are particularly more effective for resolving cost push inflation. In conclusion, I can emphasize that what is more successful, what type of policy is more successful is actually largely relying on the type of inflation that the country experiences. So that's my conclusion. Yes, that's the end of paper two. Thanks for watching. Bye.